MB-2, I'll repeat, with sound. So we process it at the very end, because the adjacent canal has already been treated, the solution has already been there, especially in MB1, the solution can get into MB2 through the anastomosis, and it will be easier for us to work with it. We take a hand file, now we're doing scouting, we insert it passively into the canal, and now it's clear. We have a problem here. Do you see where the file got stuck? Yes. It got stuck right against the wall. Here's the orifice, it got stuck against the wall of the orifice. Of course, I could force the file through now, twist it or something, but that would just create a ledge. All of this, all of this needs to be removed. This can be removed using ultrasound or with very thin special endodontic burrs, those thin elongated ones on a long shank. You can use them to remove these parts, these overhangs. Remove them. Or you can use ultrasound, gently, carefully, with ultrasound. And right now, we're not working downward. The main work with ultrasound in this case is directed mesially, mesially and a bit towards the buccal side. Like this. If we're working with ultrasound, without cooling, without water, it's literally just 10 to 15 seconds. Then we rinse, dry and wait. Now we'll pour sodium hypochlorite here and activate it with ultrasound, again with the same device, to clean it. There's a lot of debris there and visualization is severely limited. Right now, we're not touching the bottom with the file at all, just working inside like this. In the liquid, right? In the liquid, yes, we activated it a bit, then dried it. When we dry... At this stage, we listen for aspiration. You can do aspiration. You can, in principle, use air, but very carefully. There's this little strap, basically an attachment for the air syringe in the form of, what's it called? In the form of a cannula. You can use it. Right now I'm using a hand file, pre-bent. A C++ file would have worked great here, of course. I'm being very careful now. With very minimal apical pressure and slight rotation, I'm trying to insert this file into the canal. Let's measure now how far I can go in. 14, okay? So it turns out it was 14 and the neighboring one was actually 18, maybe even 19. So we still have a lot of work ahead of us. What can we do? Go in here again, passively. Go in and just maybe... What else can we do next? Yes, that's right, just a little bit of this, a bit of... Scrape. Scrape a little bit. That's how it's gonna turn out here. The scraping motion will go more outward. So mesially the movement goes this way. The scraping goes mesially. Now I've already cut it off. There's still this inner ledge left there. Now we've cut it off. And basically after these scrapings I can now... No, after scraping we'll check together to see how much progress I've made. Let's check. I still feel like I can go further. 17, can you believe it? Cool, right? Let's rinse it, because there's a bunch of shavings in there. 17 millimeters. We were able to just simply, starting at 14 with the stop, scrape a little bit. Look, you should have a certain feeling when you're scraping, you should feel... There should be some space ahead of the file tips. Some space. It's tight there, but it's there. It's not like you've hit the wall and you're just stuck there, you know? All right, go ahead, do a 10 one more time. In some difficult cases, you can choose to use an 8 file, connect it, not a 10, but take an 8 and put it into action. Now I can see what I'm doing. I'm pushing a bit of solution in there, placed it. Now let's scrape in this area. When you're scraping, another important point is to make sure you're not pressing against the bottom. So you don't get that boom, you know, when you hit the bottom and create a ledge. So you come out of the canal a little, let's say you've reached 18 millimeters, for example, then you pull back a bit and scrape within that range because the main problem is located above the tip of the file. Even if it's a size 10 or 8, it doesn't matter. A standard file has a 2% taper. That means the diameter of the file increases by 2% from the tip to the handle. So if it's a size 10, after one millimeter, it's already a size 12. After another millimeter, it's already a size 14, right? There, we've gone through it. So what's the next step? What am I going to do next? Next, in principle, we can try to determine the working length, check it with the apex locator, Aspiration, we started working, tried to determine the working length, but couldn't, we didn't reach it. What would you do next? Again, with a hand file, you can use a hand file or you can take this rotary probe lighter, the white one. Yes, set it one millimeter shorter. 
How much do we have there? Was it 17? Well, set it to 16. I think I already went into 18, to be honest. All right, let's set it to 16. A millimeter shorter. Right now we've set. We will use the rotary instrument, which is set just a millimeter shorter than the point where our hand file reached. We turn it in the constant mirror so that we can see the stopper. We have a reference area, that's this little bump. And now we've gone in. I've already gone into 17. I'm not going to push it any deeper right now. I won't. What am I going to do? I'll leave the file in the canal and look what I'm doing. I'm just working along the mesial wall, along the mesial wall. Right now I'm widening the canal using the brushing technique. Hold this, give me the hand file. Now it goes in completely freely. That's it, look, so now with the hand file. I'll just scrape it a bit. Always. Now it went in deeper. I scraped a bit without that feeling of resistance. But as you go, how much is it now? It's definitely 19 millimeters already. Do you see the level? So basically, let's say we've determined the working length for the pro glider. We rinse there, recapitulation with X1, rinse there again, recapitulation. And one thing I didn't mention, I'll say it now. When we switch to the red 25 instrument, I set it 0.5 shorter. Because during instrumentation, the working length can decrease. Do you understand why? It was a curved canal and due to the taper, you trimmed the walls there so your canal became straighter. That's basically the whole story. That's the whole story. Now just look at how everything looks right here, right now. These canals can merge together.